dad drove us kids around in one just like it. Steve Duffy. This is a 1994 Caprice Classic wagon, all Corvette drivetrain, and it was once owned by Ken Schrader. The racing legend himself. That's right. He signed the dash. <laughs> what do you like about this car? You know, it's just different. It wasn't very popular with my wife when I brought it home, and it's still not, but uh, it's just different. And it takes some getting used to, and it's got these big tires on it, and the wood grain, and so forth. And Kenny autographed the dashboard for me, so. You don't see many wood paneled cars no, anymore. No, not anymore. It uh, gives everybody an opportunity to come down with their cars and, and hang out with their friends. And they bring their lawn chairs, and they just visit. And sometimes they take the show of the road organizing events to drive the cars by retirement centers or seniors' homes for their birthdays to give them a gift they won't soon forget. And we had about 35 plus cars. We gathered at a, at a site to uh, get together and then they prayed by their homes and those people in their homes uh, come out in the yard and they wave at the cars coming by. And they, it seems you see a lot of pleasure in that and uh, the car people enjoy doing it for them and the uh, people who celebrate their birthday because they can't go someplace else really enjoy the recognition. And sometimes you go by like a nursing home, you tell them in advance and they're all up by the window. What's that like for you to see them and see them light up, if you will, when they see these cars? Well, you know, they can reminisce. That's the main thing, I think. And it depends on the car that you drive. If I drive my 1952 Chevy, they can remember back to that point when they had that car or their family member has that car. And you'll see the kind of glow on their face as you're driving by and they'll point and wave and, and uh, nod because they have some sort of memory with that. And I think that's kind of unique and it's fun to be able to do that. So we work our way down the line of cars, each with its own story, each owner with his or her reason for having this particular car. We start with Patrick. Patrick Ryan, 57 Chevy. I had one just like it when I was 18. That was a way long time ago. And um, I thought I better have another one because I'm getting close to the finish line. And my last car burned up, which was going to be my last car, but uh, apparently it, uh, it wasn't in the cards for it to be the last car. So this one's going to be my last one. So when in your life did you decide that you really wanted something like this and you were determined to get it? Oh, geez, probably before I was five years old because dad came back from the war in 46 and started working with Frank Sherbrock at Sherbrock Chrysler Plymouth down on 2nd Street, East 2nd Street. And then Johnny Lujak quit football and joined Frank, and I've been exposed to Chevrolets and cars my whole life. Now, do you know how to do you know how to fix them? Did you do a lot of work on this one? Yeah, or? yeah, not on this one. No, I'm 72 now, and I got a bad shoulder, and I got a hand with only three fingers on it, and I inherited a tremor from mom. So working on these is just no fun anymore used to be when I was younger and I rolled out from under the car on the creeper, I just stood up, went over to the workbench, got what I needed, got back under the car. Now when I roll out, I got to roll off the side of the creeper, get on my hands and knees, hope there's something close by to help me stand up. And when I get to the bench, I forgot what the hell I got out from under the car for. So we got to stand there for a while. So do you drive it around? Do you oh, just yeah. go and park it somewhere? What do you do? We take it up to Minneapolis in June for back to the 50s. There's 12 to 13,000 cars at the uh, fairgrounds up there in St. Paul and nothing newer than 64 gets in the show. So for somebody my age, that's heaven. Uh, Jerry Waite, 1964 El Camino, 350, four speed, bucket seat, console, original except for the motor. What do you like about this car? Uh, that it's a four speed car. I'm a I'm a three pedal man. I don't like automatics when I'm having a car like this. 
So, and then I have the motor, I have dual quads on it. It's a pretty good looking motor. So that pretty much. What got you interested in cars? Uh, about uh, 55 years ago, I started drag racing. Actually, yeah, about 55 years ago, I started drag racing. And I worked in a gas station for quite a few years. Been in the parts, I was in the parts business for 42 years. So you know, you know your way around these things. Uh, pretty much, yeah. Which you kind of have to do when you have an older car. You have to be able to work on it, right? Yep. Yeah, this one I, the, the paint, body work, interior was done. I did the motor myself, so. Well, my first car, by the way, was a 73 Ford Ranchero, nice. which was kind of like the El Camino, yeah, but yeah, not too many of them on the road. No, no, not too many anymore. Not too many of these. There weren't that many of these built. This uh, was the first year of the... Uh, Chevelle body style El Camino. They had the full size, on, based on a full size car in 59 and 60 and discontinued that and then brought it back out in 64, so. So with the 350 in there, could this keep up with the Chevelle? Oh yeah, sure. It's the same, it's same, it's the same chassis and everything, so. Okay, uh, my name's uh, Pedro Lopez. Okay, and this is a 1965 Pontiac GTO, uh, 389 tri-power. And uh, I've had, this is my fourth one that I've had since I was 18, 19. What is it about this car that you like so much? I don't know, it was back back in the day, it was supposed to have been one of the fastest, you know, muscle muscle cars, you know, out of straight out of the factory. And that's, and I just got hooked on it and just, you know, I, the first one I had, I went into the service. I got drafted, went in the service. I left it at home. My brother totaled it out while I was in the service. <laughs> so, so I ended up coming back out of service and I bought another one. And so I just, just kept buying them. So with all that power, are you tempted sometimes to kind of Spare use it? Tires? Oh yeah. Yeah. That's, that's part of the, part of the, you know, the excitement. <laughs> got any big tickets from it? No, no, I really don't. Uh, you know, abuse it. You know, every once in a while, I'll, I'll squeal the tires. And just kind of nice to know that the power is there, right? Right, right. Just what is it about the American spirit? You served your country, and now you're, you you have this beautiful car. There's something about cars and the American spirit, huh? Yeah, yes, there is. You know, it's uh, it's part of, part of our heritage. You know, I, I think, and you know, it's an American-made car, and you know, just uh, it's just something that I grew up with. You know, I just uh, it's in my blood and I drive it. I feel like I'm 20 years old again, you know, even though I'm 73. So, but I've had, other than GTOs, I've had uh, Chevelles. I've had, uh, I just sold a 1968 Camaro that I had over 500 horse, you know, it was a 427. And I've got a 55 Chevy at home, two door hardtop. So. When you drive down the street in something like that and you see people Give it a second look. What's that like for you? Yeah, it, it's it's exciting. It it you know it kind of gives you you know the it just make, gives you a good feeling. You know, I mean when little kids give you the you know the peace sign and you know you drive by, they even know what they are. So yeah, they appreciate it. Yeah, they appreciate the the cars. You know, it's, it's just something they don't see all the time. And for some of the older people, this sort of takes them back in time. Yeah. yeah, I've had people say, oh yeah, I used to have one just like that, you know, when I was younger and, and stuff like that, you know. It's a good conversation starter. Oh yeah, yes it is, yes it is. So we're standing by here by a classic Dodge truck and a Chevelle. Wow, I'd like to see these in a race together. Could you tell me your name and tell me about your vehicle? Bruce Hoyer, it's a 1950 Dodge pickup, has a 360 drivetrain from a 1978 Plymouth Valari. I've had it mm, about 11 years now. Now, did you put it together? Do you do any work on it, or do you just get the drive around and show it off a little bit? I do a little work. I did have the whole drivetrain rebuilt and stuff. I didn't do it. I don't have uh, the knowledge to do it or the the tools to be able to do it. But uh, I've done odds and ends on it. You know, working on it a little bit. He's done the brakes and stuff for me. What do you like about this old truck? Uh, it's a lot of fun. A lot of good looks. People give you looks all the time, you know, thumbs up and just a lot of fun to drive. And it brings you back to a good old time where I grew up. And tell me about your name and tell me about your car. Hey, I'm uh, Larry Lucas and that's a 1967 Chevelle Supersport. 
And uh, I had one in high school, not this one, but I wish I had that one back. And uh, I've had this going on five years, and I found it up in Rochester, Minnesota. I was looking for three or four years to find, because I wanted a, a 67. And uh, I put power steering, it was pretty much done, everything was done except I put disc brakes on the front, power brakes, and then uh, power steering. And uh, My brother had a Chevelle in high school, and he, he got, found himself in quite a bit of trouble. The police yeah. in the area knew <laughs> knew and set up traps for him all the time. Oh yeah, yeah, I can, I can imagine. So you like the power, or what is it about the Chevelle you like so much? I, I like the looks of the car, the body style, and I, I liked them in high school, and in the power, burning tires. Burning tires, and it's got a lot of power. 396 motor, like 400 horsepower. It runs good. Duffy was telling me that you guys get here and sit in chairs, and you sort of enjoy this overall experience, the camaraderie around all this? Oh, yeah, yeah. We go to car shows probably starting uh, middle of April or so. I think he's going to start much, this in May next yeah. year. And uh, pretty much all summer long we'll go to car shows. Uh, it's slower this year because of the COVID, you know, it's not not nearly as many car shows but otherwise usually we could do two car shows every weekend all through summer and what is your favorite part about being around all of this oh you get to meet all different kinds of people and they're all really nice people and we like to just sit around and talk shoot the bowl drink a couple beers how about for you uh check out all the different cars there's you know from old cars to new cars you know there, there's everything and uh Every condition, you know, from a rat rod to a hundred thousand dollar vehicle, you know, there's just uh, it's just a lot of fun talking to everybody. A lot of guys our age, you know, and gals too, uh, that enjoy these old vehicles. Isn't it great too to see? And I, I know for me, I could drive around the corner if I see a classic car, like if I see an old vet or a car that was like my '73 Ford Ranchero from back in the day. It brings me back to a different time, like automatically, like a song or something on the radio. Yeah, it sure does. Uh, that def definitely true. Uh, matter of fact, one guy comes down here. I'm surprised he's not down here. He has a an old Ranchero. He, he's a Ford guy. He has a I think a big Galaxy, maybe '65 or so. El, El Rancho, yeah. Yeah. Ashby. Yeah. He's usually down here. Yeah, he's usually here. I don't know where he's at tonight though. Probably once it gets down below 50, some guys decide yeah. <laughs> my car showing days are on hold for now. Yeah. Yeah. We skipped a couple couple weeks, but we figured this was definitely the last one, so we thought we better get down here. It's a bittersweet day as the sun starts to set, and slowly each one of these guys will say so long and take their car home for the last time this season. Batteries pulled, fuel stabilized, covered from top to bottom, protected the best they can from the harsh winter weather the Midwest is known for. But come spring, as the river opens back up, and the birds build new nests and sing the songs of new life. The budding trees and greening grass. These American classics will come out of hibernation once again to bring so many smiles back. The most important smile sitting behind the wheel of their American dream. If you'd like to see some photos of these guys and their cars, check out my new podcast page on Facebook, The Heart of the Story with Gary Metivier. And if you like this story, please subscribe, tell a friend, help us grow. Inspiring stories of everyday people doing cool stuff. This is The Heart of the Story with Gary Metivier.